days after attacking her as a, quote, rabid Trump hater. So here now to discuss this and more is CNN senior political commentator and former senior advisor for President Obama, David Axelrod. Uh, so, David, look, uh, a lot of times on holidays like these, we do see contrasting messages between former President Trump and others in high office. What do you make of these two very different Easter messages? Well, look, I think Trump is nothing if not consistent in the fact that he uh, I mean, he marked Christmas in much the same way. Uh, he takes these holidays and he turns them into prophecies of catastrophe uh, ahead unless he's elected. And, um, you know, this is this is how he rolls. This is his message that uh, the world is doomed, that the country is doomed uh, unless he uh, is elected and everything's going badly. And um, you know, he's the strong man who can change it. And, you know, I mean, this is sort of baked in the cake. The thing about the judge and his daughter uh, is something we should spend some time on, though. You know, he, what he's clearly doing, he's got a trial coming up in late April. Uh, that trial could very well end in a conviction, a felony conviction for him that carries with it significant penalties. Uh, I think he's concerned about that. And what he is doing is what he always does, which is he is branding it. You know, he's branding it as a, a vendetta, a political conspiracy. He's trying to link the judge uh, to Bi Biden through his daughter's political consulting firm. And he's trying to cast doubt about the whole process so that if it does go against him, uh, that he can dismiss the whole thing as a, a political vendetta. And he's going to keep torquing that up. The danger, Omar, is that... Uh, People listen to this, and uh, he put the judge's photograph uh, in his in his feed, and um, you know these are this is very very dangerous. I mean, we saw what happened before the midterm elections, uh, the attack on Paul Pelosi, uh, in, intended for Nancy Pelosi. Um, you know, people take his words seriously. We saw what happened on January sixth. Yeah. Uh, you know where he incited a mob. So uh, to, to storm the Capitol, um, I worry about uh, as these trials ratchet up, as the race ratchets up, that we're going to see uh, violence because he seems to be uh, inten intention intending to incite it. Well, and, and on that point, look, uh, this is an election year. And as you mentioned, this is a lot of how Trump rolls. So if you're President Biden and President Biden's campaign, how do you counter the dark rhetoric and violent threats uh, from a political standpoint? Yeah, well, look, I think that the second part is most important. I, I think that Biden has a role as a president and a candidate. Someone once said that good government is good politics. This is a case in which it's true. Um, he and not just the president, but all those who support him and all those in positions uh, to speak out should be speaking out about this. Uh, I mean, what it does remind people is what you're buying with Donald Trump. You know, you're buying this kind of incendiary um, uh, rhetoric, this dark, menacing rhetoric that divides and incites. And, but it's also important as president of the United States to try and um, and calm things down. And, 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 and I think he should be very, very clear that, you know, we can compete and we can have competing visions. Uh, what we shouldn't be doing is inciting people uh, to the point of violence and putting innocent people at risk. And that's what President Trump uh, or a former President Trump is doing with his rhetoric. Yeah. And look, I, I want to there is this this fascinating or I think will be significant group of voters that we will see this year. It's those that are, are done with Trump, but of course, are not quite ready to jump on, onto Biden. I mean, a lot of Nikki Haley supporters uh, come to mind. And for one, former secretary, uh, former defense secretary Mark Esper was on this show last night. He said he's absolutely not voting for Trump. Usually at a church free. Uh, you can also get it online free. Uh, on Amazon, I think the best-selling one is probably about $15, so get them a lot cheaper than that. But also, in very serious terms, on, you know, showed this earlier, on Good Friday, Donald Trump was very viciously posting that very ugly um, post that you showed earlier uh, of uh, a bound uh, Joe Biden in the back of that truck. I mean, that was on the on the day where Christians, you know, are commemorating the crucifixion of Jesus, 
that's when Donald Trump thought he would post that very ugly, violent uh, picture. So this is very serious because, you know, we know when Donald Trump does these kind of violent, very unchristian things, they have consequences. And you have his supporters do ugly things and threaten people. So that's much more serious and unchristian and dangerous. And these kind of things aren't spoken out about and people aren't asked to respond on those. And I think we need to see responses from people on those kind of actions. And I'd, I'd like to see actions and responses on that a yeah. lot more. Yeah, well, but, I just I did just ask Mike Lawler, your, yeah. your, your, yeah. your former uh, colleague. Before I uh, let you in, do you want to respond to that at all? Well, I, I, mean, I think so much is being made of a, of a video posted on social media. Uh, that's the, literally but what is. But your former colleagues, is. you know your former colleagues at the White House, people who have spoken out against Donald Trump, have gotten attacked. People sometimes show up and attack them at, at their home, you know, threaten them, and threats are made against them. So, I mean, this is a real if we want real to, if we, But if we want to have a serious discussion about political violence, and I think we should have January a serious 6th, discussion. The kind of but I would also political violence where he wants to let those people all, out of jail. And I would them. also remind you that you had the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, and a squad member talking about unrest at, in our streets. You've had entertainers and her, who have talked about assassinating President Trump, blowing up the but White never House. Never a president. We who need wants to talk to about. We need people. to talk about. We need to talk about political violence on both sides. And when it is only attacked and questioned on one. It rings hollow. We have never Although, had a president of the United States who has said he would pardon people who have attacked our Capitol Police and said he would let them free. And, and we've had people excuse that. And that's coming from Donald Trump. Doug, I want to bring you in here because yep. what we just <clears throat> witnessed are two Republicans mm -hmm. having a very uh, real debate, a very passionate one about some of the things that Donald Trump is doing. That is the kind of... Um, anger at Donald Trump that the Biden campaign is trying to harness. That's why now. Mike Pence, your former uh, boss, is not supporting Donald well, Trump. And, and what, what the Biden campaign is doing, and I'm going to play a clip from a new digital ad, is trying to get people who voted for Nikki Haley in the primaries to come vote for Joe Biden. Nikki Haley has made an unholy alliance with rhinos, never Trumpers, Americans for no prosperity. There aren't that many never Trumpers anymore. How do you bring these Nikki Haley voters back into the tent? I'm not sure we need too many. Yeah, look, the fact that we're having this conversation shows how toxic Trump has become with uh, mainstream Republicans. A lot of Republicans, not just elected officials like the former congresswoman, but a lot of her constituents. And uh, it's, it's a smart move by the Biden campaign to... Uh, reach out to them. And uh, look, we've seen in many races over the last two, three years, whether it was Kentucky in 2023, uh, New York three, the special. Thank you for being with us. I, I wanted to speak to you on Friday night when I first saw the imagery that Donald Trump posted of a, a pickup truck, real pickup truck. People have do this, they put this on their trucks, but it's a picture that if you're driving behind the truck is meant to make you you know, imagine that, Donald, uh, that Joe Biden is lying in the back of that truck his eyes are closed. I don't know if he's supposed to be dead or unconscious or, or what it is. Hands tied behind his back, feet bound. And again, you talk so much about the fact that these people don't have to commit the violence themselves. They just have to put it out there. Yeah, I, I, I was extremely disturbed to see this. And, uh, you know, a third of my book is about coups. And that image in particular, it's very important that it's life size because it's performing yes. uh, a work of propaganda and imagination that people can actually see that no one is off limits, even a sitting president of the United States. And really, it's showing what would happen in the event of a coup, because in a coup, the sitting, dem often Democratic leader, is overthrown and becomes a hostage uh, if he's not killed or, or put in jail. So this is, is highly disturbing. I, but it's not an isolated incident. Uh, recently, the Kansas GOP uh, uh, had a fundraiser. And donors were invited, this was a reward for donating, to assault with sticks, et cetera, uh, an effigy of Biden. Now, the official party distanced itself, but it still happened and had lots of participants. 
So we're living through an unprecedented uh, effort to delegitimize uh, the rule of law, our entire democratic system, all our institutions, up to a sitting president of the United States. And violence is being proposed as a valid form of dealing with differences. And there we are in the realm of autocracy. Let me ask you, I, 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 we, I think, both share um, a, a, a real strength and a, a feeling in the First Amendment and the, the preservation of the rights to communicate and the, the, the right of the press. How do you square that with the criticism of things that seem to be violent incitement? Most courts of law draw lines at, at, at very specific violent incitement. Uh, but how do, you, how do you think about this? Because we, we, want to be, we want people to be able to express their dissatisfaction with Joe Biden, Donald Trump, or anybody else, you or me. Where's the line? I think context matters. It also matters where we are as, as a, a country. We had January 6th. Talk about delegitimation. This was an attack on our entire system of Congress as it is understood in a democracy. So inciting violence toward individuals, there's a logic to it. And you mentioned before the, the rash of threats to prosecutors and judges and lawyers. Um, this is what autocrats do. If you look at Turkey today, uh, Erdogan's regime, there's hundreds of lawyers and prosecutors who have been detained or are sitting in jail. These are the people who are always uh, punished uh, and sometimes killed in the history of autocracy because uh, authoritarianism is a system where you arrange government so that the leader and his cronies and his party cannot be held accountable. So that's what we're seeing here. So we have to evaluate uh, any the, the right to free speech in, in terms of the stakes of that speech. So you, you, this is two important things. One is the, the way uh, a government or administrative structure is formed in, in an authoritarian uh, environment. And the other one is this cult of personality, which is outside of government. Uh, and I want you to tell me about the, the distinction, because you wrote about Trump's personality cult a few weeks ago in your uh, amazing newsletter, Lucid. You said, quote, Trump as a wronged figure is fundamental to the victimhood persona that keeps his supporters tied to him, to the twisting of the January 6th assault on the Capitol into a patriotic and morally righteous act, and to the depiction of the thugs involved in that coup attempt as hostages of a tyrannical regime that Trumpism must vanquish, end quote. So uh, tell me about the connection here, because you're talking about the end result, uh, but this, it depends on this, this cult. Yeah, all of Trumpism has been uh, structured around this leader cult and Trump as a victim, a victim of the deep state and all the other entities that we know by now. And so uh, the purpose, ever since fascism, the purpose of these leader cults is also to change the way people think of violence. And so January 6th was a leader cult rescue operation where Trump was in distress. He was this wronged you know, victim of a stolen election. And he called on his supporters to rescue him. And they did. And violence is the way that you change history. Violence is the way you respond to threats. And thus we get to uh, Biden, uh, a life-size image of Biden, uh, again, not an isolated instrument, incident, uh, who, who has to be... So folks, what you just saw there really is horrifying the world. And when I say world, I don't just mean it metaphorically. I mean that people beyond the United States have a lot at stake in this election. Because the United States is such a powerful country, militarily, economically, culturally, that if a fascist takes charge, democracy even beyond American borders is in danger. So people need to realize this. Again, hit that like and subscribe button. We're building a movement towards 500,000 subs to take down Donald Trump. And we're the ones that can do it more than anybody on this website because we have a strong movement. We need to realize how terrifying this man is. And we need to share that with everybody. His videos and words horrify all decent people.